Lesson 6-2a, absolute value, square roots, and quadratic equations. What I'd like you to remember is the distance that a certain number is from zero. The value is never negative. All right. Well, let's say solve for x in this equation. The absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 5. Okay. All right, now the portion inside of the absolute value bars might be equal to 5 or it might be equal to negative 5 because when we take the absolute value of this expression we're going to get 5 and there are two numbers that will do that, 5 and negative 5. So this portion x minus 3 might be equal to 5 or x minus 3 might be equal to negative 5. So let's go ahead and solve for both of those. If we add 3 on both sides of this equation, we will get x equals 8. And here, if we add 3, we will get x equals negative 2. Now, this makes sense because of the distance formula. Take a look here. We've got some number, and we're subtracting 3, and we're taking the absolute value. Remember, the, that is the distance formula on a number line. So there's some number that is 5 units away from 3. Let's take a look at it on the number line. Let's say 3 is right here. The difference between our mystery number and the number 3 is 5. So we could go to the right or we could go to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, that would put us at positive 8. Positive 8 is 5 jumps away from 3. And if we go in the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so you can see 5 jumps here or 5 jumps here. So what you need to remember is that absolute value problems are going to have 2 possible answers. All right, now, the next question is, is absolute value a function? Okay, is absolute value a function? Well, let's go ahead and graph the most basic absolute value equation and see if it'll pass the vertical line test. Here we have y is equal to the absolute value of x. That's the simplest absolute value equation in the world. We want to determine whether or not it is a function. Well, let's make a little chart. And let's take several values here. Let's do some negatives and some positives. How about negative 2, negative 1, and 2? Okay. Now, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Okay, because negative 2 is 2 jumps away from 0. And this would be 1. Absolute value of 0 is 0, because 0 is no jumps away from 0, and then 1, and then 2. All right, now, let's see, what would the graph of this look like? All righty. Hmm, okay. If we go to negative 2 on the x-axis, we'll go up to positive 2. Negative 1, up to positive 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. All right, so what you have here, if we connect all the fractional possibilities, is the flying V. And indeed, um, absolute value graphs are always going to be Vs. All right. Now, does this pass the vertical line test? Does every single X value generate one and only one Y value? And we, yeah, it, is, it does. It does pass the vertical line test. So in mapping notation, we can write f maps x onto the absolute value of x. That is a function. All right, now we're going to take a look at square roots, the second part of today's lesson. We're going to begin by taking a look at a brief activity. I'd like you to fill in this table. Say x is 4. All right. 
like you to tell me what's the square root of x squared. Okay. So what I'm asking for here is what is the square root of 4 to the second power? Well, of course, that'd be equal to the square root of 16, which takes you right back to 4. All right. And in your Algebra 1 course, you've probably learned that square rooting will undo squaring. Okay, and that's why you just get 4 right back. All right, now let's try negative 4. Let's make it a little bit interesting. So this would be the square root of negative 4 squared. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So once again, we're looking at the square root of 16, which is 4. So this one took us back to the original x. This one did not. This one took us back to the opposite of the original x. All right, let's try a decimal here. How about 2.5? Right. That would be the square root of 2.5 squared. Well, 2.5 times 2.5 is 6.25. So we're looking at the square root of 6.25, which is 2. Well, that one took us right to the original one. And let's try the opposite of this, 2.5. The square root of negative 2.5 squared well, negative 2.5 times negative 2.5 once again is positive 6.25. And the square root of that is 2.5. Hmm. So squaring underneath the radical removes the negative sign. Then you take the square root of a positive number and you get a positive number. So over here, you're always going to get a positive number. So here's the question. Is the square root of x squared always equal to x. Does square rooting the x squared really always give you back the x? Does it always just undo? The answer is no. Okay. Sometimes, as in these cases right here, you're going to get the opposite. All right. You start with a negative, you'll end up with a positive because this squaring turns the negative into a positive and then you root a positive number and you get a positive number. So, but half of the time you will get x. So this brings us to the uh, absolute value square root theorem. Absolute value square root theorem. For all real numbers x, the square root of x squared is always going to be the absolute value of x. You will always, always, always get a positive answer here or zero. Okay, if you plug a zero in here, you would get the absolute value of zero, which is zero. So, square rooting and x squared cannot give you a negative answer.